Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I have sort of a story time video for you. Um, hopefully this won't be too long, but I wanted to talk about something that um, I've really started fighting pretty hard against lately, and that is me being fat. Um, now, I'm not like super fat. I'm, I'm about 5'10 or 5'11 without shoes, and I weigh... Weighed myself yesterday, I was like 196. Um, but the thing is, I've been up to about 210, or maybe even like slightly under 215. And I have slowly started to lose a little bit of the weight, um, but then I kind of plateaued between, well, like 200 and 205. Um, because I, I wasn't really doing anything, I was just kind of watching my eating a little bit. So, um, I wanted to tell you guys the story about how I got fat. And, um, I think that's something that, um, I mean, people that, like me, that are into weight loss, health, fitness, uh, they might find interesting, because I think my story is a little bit different than uh, a lot of people's. So, um, I want to give you guys a little bit of background story. I am 31, and, uh, this is the second time in my life that I was fat. And the first time was not my fault. Um... And I know that sounds like bullshit, but no, really, it wasn't my fault. Uh, my junior year of high school was the first time I was fat, and it was because I was on a medicine that one of the side effects was extreme weight gain. Um, and not only did I have the extreme weight gain, but I was hungry all the time. Like, I would eat, like, three or four helpings of everything at every meal. I got, like, two lunches at school. Um, so... It didn't matter that I was on the track team at the time, and that I was getting several hours of exercise a day, um, and that I was young and had a good metabolism. I would just packed on the weight, and um, like I said, that was like my junior year of high school. I went from a 30-inch waist to a 38, and I was really on the border of having to go to a 40. Um, and then I went up to 205 which, until I got fat this time, that was the most I'd ever weighed. Now, I went from 135 to 205 in a matter of a couple or three months. Like, it was extreme weight gain. So, fortunately, I was taken off that medicine. Um, I don't even remember the name of it, but whatever it was, um, I got off of it. And it did take two or three years... Um, slowly to lose the weight, but I wasn't actually trying to lose weight, and I wasn't actually exercising, like, at all. So, I, I mean, that's why it took that long. So, that was the first time that I was fat, and I'm going to compare that to now. Um, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have, like, the stretchy skin, I didn't have anything like that. The only things that I really had from being fat is I still had a little bit of something under here, most of the times you wouldn't notice it. Um, you see it more when I'm not shaved like this. Um, and then under, I think it's, yeah, under this arm, at the back of my armpit, there's like a stretch mark. It's like under where my arm goes, so you never see it. But that was the only stretch mark I had from being fat. So uh, that was in like 2001. So fast forward to 2015. Well, let's say 2014. So... Two years ago, I uh, moved back to one of my college towns. Uh, I got a job there, and one of the things about that town is there's access to great food, and there's um, there's just a, a sort of a culture of eating healthy, working out, being outdoorsy. So um, that inspired me to make some changes when I moved there. Now, I wasn't overweight at the time. I probably weighed 160 to 175, somewhere in there, and... I wasn't, like, fat at all. I was I was a little bit out of shape. Like, if I ran, I would have been really out of breath. Um, but I wasn't out of shape. And so what happened was um, I started running in the spring of 2014. I got injured. I think I might have broken my ankle. It's kind of a long story. And I started, um, after I got that healed up a little bit, I had to wait about eight months to get it healed to where I can run on it. But in the meantime, I did a lot of hiking. Um, at least once a week, I went for a several mile hike. 
so I was still being active, being somewhat in shape, and I didn't gain any weight during that period. But what happened was I actually got fat because I got super in shape. And there were a few things that came together to make that happen. Um, the first thing was I, um, I started eating better. I ate at home most days. And eating better for me is I don't cook. So eating better for me is eating TV dinners at home rather than eating fast food. And I know I get a lot of shit for saying I eat t TV dinners all the time. But the thing is, it's so much better for you than eating out. And it's so many fewer calories, not to mention cheaper. Cheaper was the reason I was doing it. So uh, I ended up doing that, you know, two or three times a week at lunch break at work. I would go down and get fast food or something. But for the most part, I ate at home. And I also, around the same time, um, I still wasn't able to run. So I started lifting. And I lifted for, I don't know, most every day for like two or three months. Um, and then finally I was able to buy a new pair of running shoes. I felt like my ankle was healed up enough. Uh, probably December of 2014, I started um, getting back on the treadmill because it was cold outside and um, started doing like two miles a day, something like that. And then January through March of 2015 was where I really kicked in uh, to high gear. I was eating a better diet, I was running again, I'd been lifting. I stopped lifting because running started taking up so much of my time. And my goal was, I was going to run the Parkersburg News and Sentinel Half Marathon. It's a Boston qualifier, it's an Olympic qualifier, and it's one hell of a hard half marathon. And it's also the one from my hometown, so I wanted to, like, you know, run the hometown event and conquer it. Well. I got on a training plan from Matt My Run, and I stuck to it. I think I missed maybe only two or three of these runs, but no matter how tired I was after work, I went. Whether it was 20 below zero, which it was some days, I went and did it on the treadmill. If it was 45 or above, I ran outside. And on Sundays for my long runs, I would pay the membership fee to get into one of the gyms in town that has a uh, like the circular tracks on the upper floors, and I would run my runs there. So. Um, I actually got in really good shape. I gained some weight because I was gaining muscle. I actually gained about 10 pounds, um, but that was fine. I knew I was in shape. So I trained hardcore for this marathon, and once I got, once I got running and was really serious about meeting my running goals and, um, and keeping up with the, the training sessions, what happened was I ate even better because I was more concerned about my intake and I'm like, well, I don't want to go eat a Little Caesars Hot and Ready because that's going to mess with the progress that I've been making. If I'm going to have good runs, I need to have good fuel going in. So I got really conscious about that. Um, even when I went on a road trip, I made sure I had a hotel that had a, a treadmill and I did my run in the treadmill in the hotel. Like literally, I was so good at this. And um, I got up to the point where I ran 10 miles. And the last solid run I did of my long runs that I did on Sundays, I was supposed to do an 11 mile. And it, I just, I couldn't do it. I, I stalled out like right at 10 miles. And I know it was just a bad run, but I had no idea what was coming after that. Started, I, so I moved to where I live now, um, to the city I live in now. And I started that job that I made the video about of quitting my job. So if you haven't seen that, look at my video titled How uh, I Quit My Job. And that explains why that got all messed up. But anyway, so my training plan was just cut off. And I thought maybe I'll have to take a week off to get moved. But that job, everything about it, everything was an absolute nightmare. And I did some runs. I mean, I even did like six plus mile runs some nights after work. But I just couldn't stick to a training schedule. And I realized there was no way that I was going to be able to uh, get ready for that half with what I was uh, working. Now with this job, this is where the weight starts coming in. Um, I started out working like 36 hours a week and then 40 and then 50 and then 60 and then 70. And I worked five and then six and then seven days a week. 
and I was burnt out. I was miserable. I was depressed. Um, none of those things are good for a training program or for eating healthy or anything. Um, for example, I had to work every Sunday, so like every Sunday I'd order a pizza because I was in the office by myself and I needed to work on my stuff. So I started eating like crap. And then I started using fo food as a coping mechanism. Um, I would walk down to the drugstore down the street and I would buy like a liter of root beer and like, I forget, oh, and sweet tea. And so that's like, you know, two, three, four hundred calories for each one of those things. I'd down like two or three of them while I'm working on my work. And of course my lifestyle changed to being very sedentary because I was working in this office job where I had to be chained to my desk. Um, and then when I got home, I was so exhausted, I didn't want to do anything active. Um, I just came home and sat. So it was a sudden change of no longer being active and also coping with the depression this job caused and coping with just being miserable in general because I was having car trouble and I was stuck at this place and all kinds of different things. It all caught up to me. And the only thing that I um, forgot to mention is during this whole time period too, when I was in Athens, I stopped drinking caffeine and started drinking a lot of water, and that made a huge difference. But um, it also brought me a problem because since I stopped drinking pop and caffeine, go somewhere and try to find something that is both caffeine free and diet. Like, it's pretty much impossible. Every once in a while, if you go to the right place, like a grocery store, you can find something like diet, caffeine-free Mountain Dew or um, Dr. Pepper. But go to a gas station, go to a restaurant, anywhere that you would generally go and order something to drink. You can get either diet or you can get caffeine-free. So I was just stuck with water, and I hate the taste of water. And I don't like using Mio either because... I feel like, well, I'm getting away from the pop because of the chemicals, especially the diet pop, and, I mean, Mio is just chemicals, too. It's not any better. So, I ended up, um, I ended up getting an addiction to sweet tea, which I'm from West Virginia, and it's pretty much what everyone drinks there, either that or Mountain Dew, and, um, it... I liked sweet tea before, but I rarely drank it. I always had my diet pop. But now I knew I couldn't drink that, and I was so sick of water, so I started, I'd drink sweet tea. And I'd drink sweet tea when I went to restaurants. And all of that on top of everything else just kind of snowballed. Now, the stress didn't help. Um, and if you watch my video about how I, or why I quit my job, one of the big things was I had gained about 15 pounds in the time that I worked there. And at the time, I thought that was a lot. And um, you really couldn't tell I had a little bit of a gut, but just a, you know, like a baby gut. Like, most people wouldn't even notice. And, but I didn't feel good about myself. So um, that was one of the reasons my motivations for quitting that job was because I was, like, I knew that the job was killing me physically and I wanted to get out of it before... Um, it made it me even worse. I knew the job wasn't worth that. So I quit my job, and I moved back home with my mom, um, which was not really my choice. Um, it's a very long story, and if you watch the um, video about how I quit my job, it explains why that was my only option at the time, because they didn't give me any notice to move out kind of thing, and I didn't have anywhere else to put my stuff or anywhere else to go. I didn't have time to look for another job or anything. So... I'm not going to pay attention to that in this video, but I moved home, and that was probably one of the worst decisions of my life um, for many reasons, but one of them was, again, weight loss and food. Um, basically, I lived at my mom's that was in the middle of nowhere. It was at least, I mean, it was like five miles from a gas station at least. It was 20 miles from a fast food restaurant or any kind of restaurant. Um, no cell phone service, no internet. I mean, she's got like well water and a septic tank. It is in the middle of nowhere. And 
not only did that increase my expenses a lot with like driving and having to work in the next state and things like that, but um, she's kind of a hoarder and not very clean, and I really didn't even want to touch her kitchen. Like it was gross. Um, I would do TV dinners there sometimes, but it was tough because basically I would get up and I would work. Well, I would get up, I'd eat breakfast at home, I'd have some cereal, and then I'd go work, but then after work, I would eat food in town, which of course had to be fast food, um, and then from then, I really didn't want to go home because I didn't like being there at all, and my mom and I fought all the time, so I pretty much came home to sleep, and that meant that two out of my three meals a day were going to be fast food. Not to mention that even on the times that I tried to stop doing that and tried to eat healthy and eat at home, uh, my mom just basically refused to leave the house anymore. So she would make me buy her fast food and bring it back to her. And so, even when I was trying to fight it, like, I didn't have the willpower. Like, my mom would be like, get me McDonald's. And I'm like, I'm like, ah, I said, I gotta drive 20 miles smelling these fries on the way back while I'm going home to eat some garbage TV dinner for, it's like 300 calories. Like, it was so bad. And I know it's not, like, totally my mom's fault or anything, but it's just, she really did not help me make good food choices or to support me in any way when I was trying to lose weight or eat better. She actually made fun of me most of the time for it, which didn't help at all. Um, and so it was a real struggle. Well, anyway, I finally moved back to Columbus and got my own place. Um, I have not moved my kitchen stuff in or even unboxed it, and I'm not sure I'm going to, because honestly, my kitchen was pretty damn gross when I moved in here. Um, I have not had the time to thoroughly scrub it, so I haven't put anything in there. I use the microwave, and that's about it. Um, I don't plan to stay here more than a couple years. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll super deep clean the kitchen, but I don't feel like I should have to. Um, or maybe I'll just want to get my shit together financially move into a better place but um, but what I have been able to do and, and this is why I'm talking to you guys about this now I don't like to talk about a problem unless I've already come up with a solution for it and back in June I started eating better and I lost about 10 pounds um, from that peak weight of about 210 to 215. Um, I, I lost that weight, and then I was like, well... But then I got sick, because... Not sick, but like, sick of eating what I was eating. I got sick of the healthy food. And man, July and most of August, um, I just ate like crap. And I put... Well, I didn't exactly put the weight back on, but I put some of it back on. So, anyway, as of Friday of last week, um, not two days ago, but like a week and two days ago, um, I started eating better again. I started using my fitness pal again to track my intake. I've been under my goal every day. And I've st steadily dropped. I, st I took some before pictures of me at 198 pounds. And, um, you know, I've weighed myself mostly every day uh, to track that. And I'm actually losing weight pretty fast. Um, because it's just a combination of, well, not being a fat ass and making sure that I stay under my calorie goal. And when I track that, that makes me not eat fast food. So I've been eating at home mostly, um, and that has helped a lot. I've already lost two pounds in less than a week and a half, and I'm going to pretty quickly, I mean quicker than I thought, be back at my goal weight. My goal weight is somewhere between 165 and, like, 170, probably. Um, the trackers that I'm using say, like, 183 or something, but I know that me at 183, I like, I have a gut and I look fat, so um, 
but I also know that where I think I should be at like 160, I know that that's like I, people start commenting that I'm like emaciated. So um, somewhere in that range is where I need to get to, and I'm really set that I'm going to do this because I feel gross about myself. I mean, if my studio wasn't so weird, I could stand up right now and just like show you guys. Um, I don't really look fat other than my double chin thing here, which hopefully will go away when I lose the weight. Um, but you can see it in my face. If you see my older videos, I definitely look a lot thinner. Um, what I'm going to do, honestly, is since I've gotten fat, I haven't had a lot of energy or motivation to be active, whether that be to go run or to just go walk around or go, um, like, I don't know, hike or whatever. I have not felt that, and I'm hoping that um, I'll get back to that once I've lost a little bit of the weight and feel better and have more energy. Um, so I'm doing the diet part first. I'm going to add exercise in a little bit later and just make it work double time for me. Um, but I'm, I'm planning really by probably the end of the year to be back at my goal weight. And then my plan is I'm actually going to, in January again, start my training plan that I did two years ago. And um, I'm going to be running the half marathon in Parkersburg in 2017. So uh, if any of you live locally or if you're a big fan, you can stop out and see me. Um, you'll see me cross the finish line there. They announced the names there. I've done the two-mile race in that course. So um, uh, feel free to say hi if you see me. Um, Maybe we can get a beer after or something. But anyway, guys, um, that's how I got fat, and that's how I plan to get unfat. Um, I am actually really help, uh, interested in health and fitness, um, diet, all that stuff. I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know very basics. Um, I'm the only person that I know or the person, only person in my family that's interested in losing weight. Everybody else just wants to be a fat ass, so if, if, um, if you guys have any, uh, suggestions, or if you've been through this yourself, um, if there are any apps I'm missing that could help me out, um, or just, if you guys have any suggestions for me, um, leave them in the comments below, um, I will be coming out with another story time video next week, I promised a, um, a, fan of mine that I would do one for, and I got one in mind that I hope that she'll like. I hope everybody else likes it too. So uh, next week is going to be a story time video. The week after that, I'll be posting another financial video. I'm going to be doing those every third week now. So um, if you're looking forward to story time videos or for um, or for fi financial stuff, make sure you subscribe um, to keep those videos um, coming in to you so you get a notification when, uh, when those are posted. Also, I pre-ordered the iPhone 7, and that's a huge jump for me. I might be making a video about that, um, but I definitely will be making a video with the iPhone 7. Uh, for those of you who are subscribed to me because of my genealogy videos and my DNA tests, um, I am organizing a family reunion back home for my dad's surname. Um, and that's going to be, we're going on a road trip. It's going to actually be a really cool thing. Um, that is going to be in October. I can't remember the date right now, um, but I will be posting a vlog style video that's probably going to be pretty long. It'll be a vlog style video based on um, that. You'll see all my cousins. Um, you'll get to see where my family's from, and I haven't seen anything like that, anything else like that on YouTube. So I'm hoping um, that you guys will like it. Hopefully, um, maybe it'll combat the idea a little bit of family reunions being boring, because mine actually tend to be pretty fun. Um, so again, if you're looking forward to that type of video, um, make sure you subscribe below, leave me comments, um, shoot me direct messages too, I try to respond to everybody. Um, so again guys, um, thanks for watching my channel, please subscribe to get more content like this. Um, we'll have a story time video next week, maybe an iPhone video, another financial video the week after that, and look forward here pretty soon to that family reunion video. So thank you guys again for watching my video, and I'll see you next week.